you built this from scratch and put it all together. What, what do we have here with the TX? Well, it's TX is for Turbine Experimental, mm. and it was a Group 6 prototype, the type of cars that run at Le Mans, Sebring, and Daytona. This is the poster for Daytona, raced against the Ford factory GT40 and the Porsche and the Ferrari team. So, it, so a little car out of Palatine is with against Ferrari and Ford's best. Yeah, remarkable, isn't it? <laughs> I am Lou, another special episode of My Car Story. So we have Bob McKee here. Bob, good to see you again. We're in Bob McKee's time capsule now. If you don't know who Bob McKee is, it's gonna be a little history lesson because he has a lot of Indianapolis 500 as well as racing and sports and motor car history. So we're gonna start with some of the details and I think you'll be fascinated as we get the chance to talk to Bob. He's kind of a humble guy, so I may have to pull some things out of him, but that'll be all right. So, yeah. so what I've got in the pictures behind us is, is I asked Bob, I said, how did it all start? So Bob, how did it kind of get started? Well, I just was a hot rod kid in high school and built a bunch of hot rods. What was your first one? Uh, 1929 Model A pickup truck. And what happened to that? Well, I put a V8 in it and uh, <laughs> changed it all around. Okay. And, you know, in those days, you could get a driver's license at 15. Okay. And so when I was 15, I bought the truck and I had transportation when yeah. I had the engine in it and I kept taking it in and out and modifying it. <laughs> One thing leads to another. And well, well, let's talk about how that led to another. So now you got rid of that car and where'd you get your first real experience at? Who was the first guy? Well, I worked at Ray Erickson's speed shop in okay. Chicago. And we now, were, how'd you get that job? How'd they know about you? Well, they knew about the, the Model A that I had and um, they needed a guy to put stuff together, so yeah. I started working there. A good friend of mine was already working there, and he put in a good word. And so, um, actually, I went in business with him, and we were partners for a while in the shop. Yeah. Now, what was, what was one of the first guys you were uh, helping, helping with his racing career? Oh, gee, there were so many. You know, when you look at all the pictures around, uh, all sorts of drivers. Tiny Lund was probably the best known. Tiny Lund, that's his, that's his 50, 55 Chevy right there. Right. And you helped put that together. Yeah, I was, in those days, you were the mechanic and that meant you did everything. And, you, and so he was winning races and you were the guy behind the scene. Right, Yeah. but okay. you know, I had to rebuild the engine and the transmission and straighten it out if he hit the fence and, <laughs> and keep the thing running. And um, we became good friends, and he ended up crashing that and wadding it all up in a little pile. And so uh, the next year after he's, he healed up, uh, he said, let's do another car. What one do you want to build? And so we ended up with a Pontiac. Yeah. 56 Pontiac. And it didn't end up with a Pontiac first. What happened before that? Just a, just a, well, a hair before that. We got a Studebaker Hawk thinking that was a small frontal area with a big engine <laughs> and fairly lightweight. And uh, we bought one of those and he drove it back to Lincoln, Nebraska where we were both living. Yeah. And the engine blew up in Iowa so on the that. way back. So <laughs> Figured if it can't make it back home, we <laughs> We're not gonna better ride. start We're with something else. We're not going to run that one, right. right. So we went right over to the Pontiac. So now you pick the Pontiac, and what happened from there? Well, he financed it with the finance company, yeah. and we went down to NASCAR. I built it at Speedway Motors in Lincoln, Nebraska. Okay. And um, we went down, and you know we had to finish races and make enough money to sure. keep us in hamburgers. And uh, so we raced wherever we could, sometimes twice a week. And, uh, and you were winning. Well, we weren't winning, but we, we finished. You know, in those days, it was a pretty rough and tumble group. Um, a lot of bootleggers driving. Uh, uh, it was a different experience for a kid from the Chicago area yeah. to go down with all the bootleggers and uh, the whiskey runners and yeah. try and run a stock car with them. But yeah. it was an education. It was interesting and fun. 
So, so kind of describe some of the, the highlights, if you will, on the wall here. Uh, kind of give me a few pieces here. Well, this is uh, Dick Rathman in an Indy Roadster. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a Watson car. Um, A.J. A. Watson was probably the best car builder around in those days by a long shot. Okay, and you were connected with him how? Well, I had been a stooge for him and helped him uh, before I got drafted in the Army. Okay. And so then uh, when I got out of the Army, uh, Dick arranged for me to get this car to take care of for him to drive. And uh, this now, is the now car. Now, what did Dick do? How was his racing background? Well, he was pole position at Indy and yeah. set a track not record. Not too bad, not too bad, pole position at Indy. How about this guy over here? Oh, that's Roger Ward? Yeah. He's How a, did he do he, in Indy? He, he won Indy twice. <laughs> he won Indy twice, okay. So you're connected with these guys, and what were you doing for Roger's car? Well, that was a car that he bought from Jack Brabham. Okay. And Jack was, you know, world champion in Formula One, and this was a Cooper Monaco that he had without an engine in it. So... Roger Ward bought it. We brought it back to Palatine and put an aluminum Buick engine in it. And we made our own transaxle, which there's some pictures of it up here. Okay. And an, an example of it in the front foyer where you come in. And it was, it's basically the McKee transmission. Yeah, the McKee transaxle. Exactly. So you put the transmission together that started winning major races. Yeah. Uh, it. Okay. It had a, uh, a Ford ring and pinion yeah. and a Borg Warner transmission out of a Corvette. Yeah. And then we put the quick change gears up the back. But it was, a, you know, a simple hot rod kind of a thing, combination of parts that worked. Yeah. And there wasn't anything else available. So so, so you, you, became, you became the man with that. You said this is a car that you made, period. I mean, this is the McKee Trihawk. Tell me well, about that. Actually, Lou Richards was the guy that we built it for. Okay. And he was the guy that came up with a concept. He wanted to build a car, but with regulations as they are, it's really impossible anymore. Mm. So if you make it with three wheels, it's a motorcycle. Ah. So you've got a whole lot less safety things to be concerned with, like side door beams and bumpers and airbags and all of that. So. This is a three-wheeler, so it can be a motorcycle, and um, but it handles better than almost any car. It'll corner at 0.91 Gs, <laughs> which a Porsche and uh, a Ferrari can corner at that speed with the tires that they have. Yes. And we could be the same, but all the other cars at that time couldn't go near that fast. Um, it's front wheel drive, 72% of the weight's on the front wheels. Yes. And the center of gravity is 11 inches off the ground. Oh, wow. But we had a, a Citroen engine in it made in France with a five-speed gearbox, and a lot of the suspension was off a of Renault. And we modified it so that it fit a frame that we made and then a fiberglass body. You still see some of these around? Yeah, there's a few around. How many, uh, how many total production do you think you had? We made about 200. Okay. All right. They were manufactured in Mokina. We built the first nine in Palatine. Okay. And Perfect. then they built some in Mokina, and then uh, the rest were in California. Outstanding. All right, let's, uh, let's take a look at the other side of your office. Right now we're in the Bob McKee office. We've got your draft board here, but behind me, Tell me what you've got on this bottom row all the way around. Well, that's, um, I think, 75 or 76 notebooks of projects we've done from 19, um, oh, about 54 up to the present. So every project is right here. I'm sitting in the, the historical, yeah. uh, of you know, Indianapolis and Pontiac and so many cars and so many things that you've done. People you've met, astronauts, uh, Paul Newman, uh, uh, one of the Smothers Brothers, right? They all come in here, and, and this is where it all kind of hangs out at. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> That's great. All right, well, let's also go over to one of the other areas and talk about one of your other cars. Okay. Okay, great. You built this from scratch and put it all together. What, what do we have here with the TX on the... Well, it's TX is for Turbine Experimental, mm. 
and it was a Group 6 prototype, the type of cars that run at Le Mans, Sebring, and Daytona. This is the poster for Daytona, raced against the Ford factory GT40 and the Porsche and the Ferrari team. So, it, so a little car out of Palatine is with against Ferrari and Ford's best. Yeah, remarkable, isn't it? <laughs> It's yeah, pretty it, and not only that, but look where they put your car on the list. They put you on the cover. Well, Pure Oil uh, sponsored the car. Yeah, so that was their uh, They were, you know, in uh, Rolling Meadows. Okay. Was where their headquarters was. It's become Union 76 now. But sure. At the time, they were not selling enough diesel oil or jet fuel. And so they thought that if they promoted jet engines, that would sell more fuel. And so they sponsored the car and to advertise pure oil. And they've got number 76 here for Union 76. Yeah. And, and that all makes sense in the TX, the, the, the turbo experimental. How many of these cars did you make? Three. And they're still around? Yes. They're just in collections and things like that. Right. So, okay. Uh, what do you actually call this car? Do you call it TX? What do you call it? Well, it, we call it our turbine car, our jet your, car. Your jet turbine car, okay. So we'll see if maybe we can actually get one of these, but uh, what a wonderful story here. And this actually became like a Ravel model. Yeah, there's some in the case okay, here. Okay, so let's go over to the case here. Now, this is kind of your wall of fame. Maybe you can pick out a couple of pictures that really, you know, are the, the best of the best of Bob McKee. What would you, what, what are some of the ones that you, you have some stories on? Oh, um... This car up here is uh, Jim Rathman at Monza, Italy. Okay. And I was in the Army at the time, and I had worked for A.J. Watson, which is this fellow here, Okay. before I got drafted in the Army. And um, so when they came over to run Monza, I got leave and went down and, and helped them. And Jim Rathman ended up winning that. 500 mile race down there. Really? In that car. And you helped them put it together? Yeah, I was, well, I was a stooge on it and helped. Yeah. Um, tell, me, tell me about this picture here. Who's this guy here? Well, that's probably a well known guy, too. Uh, this is Paul Newman. Yeah, I've heard of him. In the movie <laughs> Winning. <laughs> my, my son knows him because of like salad dressing. Oh, right. But yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> and in the movie Winning. Now, what was your role in the movie Winning? Well, this car is the car that he drove in that okay. movie. Number 25. And when he drove it, uh, I was too busy building those turbine cars here. Yeah. And never even got to go up and watch him make the movie. But Right. But you built that car and built that frame for him. Yeah. So Paul Newman, correct me if I'm wrong, didn't even have a racing background until you sat him in one of your cars. Well, the movie set him in the car. And I think the reason they chose that car, it was so different looking at the time, being a wedge shape and trying to make it aerodynamic. And then, but you kind of got him a little bit hooked on this, well, the story goes. I guess he had so much fun driving that he did all the stunts and everything in the car. And um, that kind of started his whole career, that movie. Yeah. And he raced. Newman, Newman Racing. Till he was 80 some years old. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So and you did had a, a really big, good job. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but Paul was so appreciative. Although you couldn't make it to see Paul, what happened? Well, I was at uh, Lime Rock. Mm -hmm. And he heard and, you were there. Well, a good friend of mine was a mechanic on this car. Yeah. Gene Crow, great, great guy. And um, he put Newman up to coming over and introducing himself to me <laughs> and said, Bob, I drove one of your cars once. I'm Paul Newman. And I said, yeah, I know who you are. <laughs> and so um, it was kind of a laugh. Yeah, so, okay, so Paul Newman came by and made sure that he knew that you knew who he was, just in case. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was pretty cool. Any other car here that, well, that stands this is, out to uh, This car was sponsored by Dick Smothers. Okay, the yeah. The Smothers Brothers. Sure. And at the time, they were a pretty far out on the edge program on TV mm -hmm. and very popular, he and his brother. He sponsored the car, and, and Charlie Hayes drove it most of the time. These but, guys were successful. Yeah, they were successful race drivers. <laughs> so they were successful race drivers. So, so he came by to say hello, or what happened? 
No, they just sponsored the car. They sponsored the car, but you've up. met them several times, things like oh, that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. What we're looking at here is, is the Gerhardt Indy car that we built. Uh, Jim Rathman, Gus Grissom, and Gordon Cooper were the owners of the car. And Grissom and Cooper were seven, two of the original seven astronauts. And interesting to get to know them. And uh, they've been to the shop and visited. And this was a car that we built for Exide Willard Railvac Battery Company. Okay. And uh, we built two of these cars. And uh, when we first built it, we thought it, the right thing to do is to make a backbone down the center of it. Okay. that all the batteries could roll into. So we made a battery tray with, with wheels on it so it would roll in and latch, and then it could roll out under a service cart. So you mm -hmm. could change batteries in five minutes. Well, I got a number of patents on that, and so that brought in a bunch of other projects too from um, McCullough and Gould and... Um, Globe Union up in Milwaukee. You made something called the Endura and the electric van. Right. Tell me about the Mechanics Illustrated cover shot there. Well, that so picture was taken in Palatine and Tom McCahill came and did a road test on the car. And he said it was the first practical electric car that he knew of. The first practical electric car from Mechanics Illustrated. That's a pretty high honor. But, uh, you know, back in those days, Nobody was thinking electric cars or sure. uh, that there was any possibility of such things. But this would go 62 miles an hour and go over a 100-mile range with lead-acid golf cart batteries. Wow. So, you know, it was... Uh, That's a fast golf cart. It was, yeah, it was a pretty <laughs> advanced electric car for yeah. its time. That's pretty neat. How many of those were, were created? Well, we ended up building three of them. Okay. But, uh, Are they still around? I've lost track of them. Okay. And then uh, I want to kind of wrap up with you over on this wall. We've got a Cogsworth engine table, and here we are in another corner of your office. But uh, this kind of sums it all up of, of you. Tell me what that is. Well, that was a, a Lifetime Achievement Award that Road and Track gave me up at Elkhart Lake, which was really a nice gesture, and I'm proud of that. Yeah, I would be too. Bob, thanks so much for being on My Car Story. It's always great seeing you and stopping by your shop and finding all kinds of fun people here with exciting cars, and I appreciate all your, your help and your friendship. Well, thank you. And I'd just like to say for the viewers who are watching, I hope you enjoy.